Let's turn to other therapies. There were a few things presented that were not immunotherapy at this meeting, and uh, Jean-Charles, you presented one of the, the more prominent ones, uh, the Lux Lung 8 trial of afatinib or uh, gilotrif versus Tarceva or Lotinib in the squamous population previously treated. Can you talk about that trial, what it showed, and what do you think it means? Sure. So to give some perspective, um, that trial was conceived in 2011. In 2011, there were no public data regarding immune checkpoints in squamous cell carcinoma. Basically, in 2011, there were no prospective trials done in squamous cell carcinoma in the second line. We were stuck with two options, docetaxel or Lotinib. Lotinib is less toxic. And in the squamous population, erlotinib is as good as docetaxel. The trials do not show a difference in that population. So we decided to compare uh, erlotinib, Tarsiva, the standard, versus uh, a second generation pon R inhibitor with the following hypothesis that uh, we know that in squamous there are many, many mutations. And we will try to shut down the signal transduction in a broader way. So Tarsiva hits only EGFR. Even if it is not mutant, it cuts the signal in through that. While uh, afatinib gilotrif cuts the signal at EGFR, HER2, and HER4. So that was the hypothesis. And the trial was positive by all means. It was positive by a reduction in the risk of progression by 19%, by a reduction in the risk of death by 19%, uh, with an extra 4.5 weeks of survival in median. It was positive uh, in disease control rate. And uh, although it had a little more diarrhea and stomatitis as compared to erlotinib, it was positive in quality of life and patient reported outcomes. So, you know, you know if you're going to choose an oral compound because the patient might not take chemo or might not be eligible to an immune shock punch because if he has autoimmune disease, what are you going to do? I mean, if he has severe psoriasis or if he has uh, rheumatoid arthritis, you cannot throw NIV on it because that's a problem. Potentially very toxic. So I really think in, in those settings, uh, Gilotrif is a very good alternative. You're going to be an oral pill, give the one who allows you to live the longer with better quality of life. What are the implications outside of that setting? In other words, should this speak to us about a choice of Gilotrif versus Tarceva in EGFR mutation positive patients? Or can you only take this as far as previously treated squamous cell carcinoma? Well, I don't think you can make the assumption that because it beats Tarceva in the squamous, it's going to beat Tarceva in the EGFR mutants. I mean, that's too much of a leap of faith. Those trials are ongoing, at least between Afatini versus uh, uh, IRESA. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I mean, uh, uh, it has, as I say, a broader mechanism of action. So to me, it's not a surprise that if you shut down the signal transduction in a disease that is as complex as a squamous, where we don't have a single driver, uh, well, you have uh, some added benefit. We all have a few squamous patients who got their lotinib and were stable for a very long time. And you know, the label is the label, but a lot of people are using Tarsiva in the third line setting in squamous. I mean, who doesn't have a squamous patient fit enough who already got chemo doublet followed by docetaxel? And I'm sure, unfortunately, the 75% of patients who will not benefit from nivolumab will be very, very, very happy when there will be third line that there is a new therapy orally available that extends life. Well, I, I would say that certainly Nevo has pushed both docetaxel and, and EGFR-based therapy further out. Uh, Lena, do you think, what did you think? I mean, I certainly wouldn't disagree that in the context of this trial, there was a clear benefit uh, to afatinib over erlotinib. But I, I guess the problem I have with the trial, take aside when it was designed, is that I don't think erlotinib ever has been or ever should be a standard in squamous cell carcinoma. It is a targeted therapy which has efficacy against EGFR mutations, which don't exist in squamous cell carcinoma. And the what response rates that we're talking about, even the improvement, are still under 5%. The improvement in survival is 4.5 weeks. I can't see a justification to ever use either of these drugs, quite honestly, in squamous cell carcinoma. Even in the turn line setting, Lina? What are you going to do after your NIVO we, fails? We never use uh, er erlotinib in squamous cell carcinoma. We would use chemotherapies, or we would try to put those patients on relevant clinical trials to try to learn more about what might work better. But I don't think this is... And that may be you know, a factor of the fact that I work in an academic medical center where there are clinical trials available, although people come from very far for that purpose. Oh, and, right. But I, I think that we need to do better. No, I agree we need to do better. And uh, however, you know, 
uh, I looked very carefully at the data of erlotinib versus docetaxel. There has been uh, the only randomized trial that suggested a superiority or demonstrated a superiority of docetaxel versus erlotinib is Taylor. Yes. When you look at that publication, which is in Lancet Oncology, and you look at the forest plots, there is absolutely no advantage of docetaxel over erlotinib in the squamous population. Let me remind you that in the BR21 trial by Francis Shepard, uh, which was positive of Erlo versus Tarsiva, it was more positive in the squamous population as compared to uh, placebo as over the overall trial. And remember, I agree EGFR mutation is the great biomarker for these HER inhibitors. Nevertheless, protein overexpression has been very much and very clearly reported in squamous as compared to adeno. We have had hints of activity. I mean, the FLEX trial where cetuximab was put with chemo didn't make it. The nested immunoprior prior is also pinpointing. So I don't think we can just disregard and say the HER pathway in squamous, uh, because it's not driven by a mutation, and it might be driven only by overexpression of the protein, has to be disregarded. I think we need to dig up. But I agree with your point. Well, I, I am somebody who does use uh, erlotinib, Tarsiva in squamous patients or EGFR wild type in general, not expecting dramatic benefits. But there are plenty of patients who have a good performance status, and we have a very limited arsenal of therapies that have a proven benefit. Even if it's of modest benefit, I think certainly for some patients, I think it can provide some uh, some survival benefit and and symptomatic benefit, modest though we might expect that to be. So it's, it's debatable, and I certainly think there's plenty of room for uh, novel therapies to come in, but uh, potentially a role. And I also agree that uh, the setting of wild type is a, really a, a fundamentally different question from EGFR mutation positive, where I would, would not say that we should extrapolate.